Welcome to the first tutorial of Doriflow. I'll be showing you how to set up a very simple case using Blender. So first, we add a cube, scale it up to around 10 meters. Physics tab, Doriflow initialization, domain. Next, we can add another cube, scale it up, move it down here, and this will be our fluid. We can then also add a torus, move it up here, and this will be our solid. We can also rotate it to see the dynamic of the floating. Back to domain, we can change all sort of variables in here. So for example, if I change the resolution to 35 and the time steps to 1 for it to be faster, viscosity to 0.05, close it. Then we go to main simulation, click compute. And also, please keep this window open. It will automatically close when finished. We check on the data to see how many fluid particles or the particle radius of the simulation. We can also keep track of the frame that I finished computing. During the simulation, we can go to Mesh, import fluid particles, scroll through the frame to see how the fluid plays out. Since now we are at the frame 50, import again so you can have the fluid particles up to frame 50. And we just wait for it to finish. Okay, so now it has finished we can start to import the solid motion. This will clear out all the particles, scroll through the frames to check on the dynamic of the floating. Then we can import the fluid particles again, scroll through the frames to check the simulation. Particle to mesh, click on the DF mesh, geometry node, pay attention to the poise to volume node. You can manually change the radius to change the thickness of the fluid surface. Back to the main, close, close. Now we go to the Y water particle. Down here, you can change all sorts of variables to manipulate the number of the Y water particles that will be generated. So for example, if you can, you can change it to, for example, um, 0.52. And the maximum number of particles can be 600k. Lifetime to be 100. And compute. Keep this window open as well. Click on the data to see how the foam and bubble particles are being generated for every frame and just wait for it to finish okay so now we can choose to import foam or bubble particles so let's go ahead and import the particles scroll through the frames to see how we started to have some point at the surface of the fluid then we can build geometry node to turn every point into an icosphere for rendering you can also change the percentage of the particles at the surface that's basically it. So now we just need to make it to look a bit nicer by adding a plane. There is some lag in the scene because we're at the frame 140, which means that we will have a lot of particles in the system. So I recommend going to frame one or two and start to edit the scene for it to be smoother. So move the light source up here, change the intensity to let's say 50K, go to the render, cycle, GPU compute, denoise, Optics, I use around 32 for the sam samples, also same for render, and we go to render view, then we should hide um, a domain, and also a fluid, there you go. You can click on the DF mesh, go to the material tab, click on here, and choose DF fluid material, and here you'll be able to edit the color, so for example if you want um, yeah, a darker blue. And we should also assign this to be, for example, a glass material. Okay, there you go. So that is a complete Dari flow simulation. Okay, so actually I need to make this a little bit darker. There you go. Okay, so once you're happy with the physics and the simulation, you can go back to the main physics, close the wide water tab, go to render Dari flow animation, in this tab, you should go into the camera view, view, camera to view, and adjust your camera to the scene. You can also choose a different aspect ratio as well, and then choose the output path, and click the render final animation. Please note that the local render animation function from Blender will not work here, and we're planning to improve this feature in the future. So now just use what's inside Doriflow. So this is the final result. 
as I scroll through the frames, you see the bubble particles within the fluid start to rise to the surface due to the buoyancy force. And also because we set the lifetime to 100 frames, which means that once we pass the 100 frames, it will start to delete the particles in frame 1, 2, 3 as we proceed. I want to quickly explain why we chose to do a dirty flow in a separate module like main simulation mesh or white water is because we want to give the user 100% control on the scene and simulation. So for example, if you want to have an effect where you can show a separate foam and bubble compared with the fluid, you can add an empty object like a circle. Then you can click on the foam, click on shift, click on the circle, control P to parent to object, keep transform. Then you can move an empty up and scroll through the frames. So this way you will be able to see how the foam particles dynamic play out in the scene, how the torus displays the volume in the foam. So that's only the foam. You can also do the same thing for the bubble. So let's add um, a sphere empty this time. We can hide a fluid mesh. We can hide a fluid particles. Where is the bubble? Okay, so click on the bubble, shift click on the sphere, control P, object keep, keep transform, okay. You can then start to move the sphere up, and I fluid mesh. Right, so now you'll be able to see the dynamic of three separate components in one render. Next, you can go to the Icosphere instance material and you can change the transmission. Also reduce the roughness so that it looks a bit more like a bubble. Also, click on DF Mesh, maybe change the roughness, reduce the transmission to make it to all sort of flip material that you want.